From those around, I hear a cry. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In Alhamdulillah, Nahbuduhu, and Astainuhu, and Astahuhu, and Naudu Billah means Shururi and Fusina, was Sayati Aymalina, or Mayed and Fala Muhaddilla, or Mayed and Fala Hadiella, a shadow of La Ilaha illallah, was shadow of the Muhammad Rasulullah, or Mabad. Salamu alaikum, my dear Muslim. Inshallah Ta'ala, we shall continue with part five of going through the book, Don't Be Sad. This chapter is called Do Not Be Sad, Wait Patiently for a Happy Outcome. The following hadith is found in the book of at tirmidhi The best form of worship is to wait patiently for a happy outcome. Is not the morning near? Quran chapter 11 verse 81 The morning of the afflicted is looming, so watch for it. An Arab poet proverb says, if the rope becomes too tight, it will snap. In other words, if a situation reaches the level of crisis, then expect the light and an opening to appear. Allah says, And whosoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will remit his sins from him and will enlarge his reward. Quran chapter 65 verse 5 and whosoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will make his matter easy for him. Quran chapter 65 verse 4 In an authentic hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, relates his saying from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am with the thoughts of my slave towards me, so let him think of me as he pleases. Allah Almighty also says, They were reprobated until when the messenger gave up hope and thought that they were denied by the people then came to them our help and whomsoever we willed were delivered Quran chapter 12 verse 110 know that truly with hardship there is relief some commentators of the Quran say considering to be a hadith that one hardship cannot overcome two reliefs the Prophet, peace be upon him, said in an authentic hadith, And know that victory comes with patience, and that relief comes with hardship. An Arab poet said, Some eyes are relentless, restless, while others are in sleep, in mediating that which may or may not occur. So leave worrying as much as possible, as carrying the burdens of anxiety is madness. There is your Lord who provide you with solution to yesterday and he will similarly provide for what is to come tomorrow. Another said, let events flow in the distinct path and do not sleep upset with a clear mind. Between the period of the blinking of the eye and its opening, Allah changes things from one state to another. Do not worry about your wealth that is stored in valleys unless you have faith in Allah your high castles and your green gardens will only bring you worry, grief and hopelessness. Do not be sad, even the diagnosis of the doctor and his medicine cannot make you happy if you have allowed sadness to dwell in your heart, letting it permeate your emotions and your existence. Do not be sad, you have the ability to supplicate to Allah and thus excel at humbling yourself at the doorstep of the king of the kings. You have the blessed last third of the night to invoke Allah and to rub your head upon the ground in prostration. Do not be sad. Allah has created for you the earth and what is in it. He has caused gardens of beauty to grow, filling them with many kinds of plants and flowers and pears, both male and female. And he has made all the tall palm trees, shining stars, forests, rivers and streams. Yet you are sad. Do not be sad. You drink water that is pure. You breathe fresh air. You walk upon your two feet in health and you sleep the evenings in peace. Next chapter, do not be sad, seek forgiveness from Allah often, for your Lord is of forgiving. 
I know I said to them, ask forgiveness from your Lord. Verily, he is of forgiving. He will send rain to you in abundance and give you increase in wealth and children and bestow on you gardens and bestow on you rivers. Quran chapter 71 verses 10 to 12. So seek forgiveness from Allah more often and you will reap the benefits of doing so. Peace of mind, lawful provisions, righteous offspring and plentiful rain. And commanding you, seek the forgiveness of your Lord and turn to him in repentance that he may grant you the good enjoyment from a term appointed and that he may bestow his abounding grace to every owner of grace, i.e. the one who helps and serves the needy and deserving physically and with his wealth, even with good words. Quran chapter 11 verse 3 And the Prophet peace be upon him said, Whomsoever seeks forgiveness from Allah often, then Allah makes for him a good ending for every matter of concern and provides for him a way out of every tight situation. Related in Bukhari is a hadith that is known as the chief of Al Istighfar, Istighfar, i.e., of supplications with which one asks Allah for forgiveness. O oh Allah, you are my Lord, and none has the right to be worshipped to you. You have created me, and I am your slave, and I am upon your covenant and promise as much as I am able to be. I seek refuge in you from the evil that I have perpetrated. I confess to you your favor upon me, and I confess to you my sin. So forgive me, for verily none forgive sins except you. The next chapter. Don't be sad, always remember Allah. Concerning his remembrance, Allah the All-Glorious says, Verily in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. Quran chapter 13 verse 28 Therefore remember me by praying, glorifying, etc. And I will remember you. Quran chapter 2 verse 152 And the men and the woman who remember Allah much with their hearts and tongue, Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a great reward, i.e. paradise. Quran chapter 33 verse 35 O you who believe, remember Allah with much remembrance and glorify His praises morning and afternoon, the early morning after Fajr and Asr prayers. Quran chapter 33 verses 41 to 42 O you who believe, let not your properties or your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. Quran chapter 63 verse 9 And remember your Lord when you forget. Quran chapter 18 verse 24 And glorify the praises of your Lord when you get up from sleep and in the night time also glorifying his praises and at the setting of the stars. Quran chapter 52 verses 48 to 49 O you who believe, when you meet an enemy force, take a firm stand against them and remember the name of Allah much, both with tongue and mind, so that you may be successful. Quran chapter 8 verse 45 in an authentic hadith, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, The example of one who remembers his Lord is a relation to one who does not remember his Lord, is that of living and the dead. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, also said, The, the Mufaridun outstrips others. His companions asked, Who are the Mufaridun? O Messenger of Allah, he said, the men who remember Allah often and the women who remember Allah often. In another authentic hadith, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Shall I not inform you of the best of deeds and the purest of them with your Lord, the deed which is better for you than spending gold and silver 
for a good cause and which is better for you than to meet your enemy and you cut their throats and they cut yours they said yes O messenger of Allah he said the remembrance of Allah the following a hadith is authentic and it says a man came to the Prophet and said O messenger of Allah the commandments of Islam have become too much for me and I am old in age so in form of something that I can adhere to he said that your tongue continually remembers moist with the remembrance of Allah the next chapter do not be sad never lose hope of Allah's mercy certainly none of one of certainly no one despairs of Allah's mercy except the people who disbelieve Quran chapter 12 verse 87 they were reprieved until when the messenger gave up hope and thought that they were denied by the people and then came to them our help Quran chapter 12 verse 110 and we delivered him from the distress and thus we do deliver believers Quran chapter 21 verse 88 and you were harboring doubts about Allah there the believers were tried and shaken with a mighty shaking Quran chapter 33 verses 10 to 12 do not grieve over the hurt that is inflicted upon you by others and forgive those that have ill treated you the price of jealousy and ran Rancor is enormous. It is a price that the revengeful person paid in exchange for his malice towards others. He pays with his hard flesh and blood, his peace, his relaxation and his happiness. These he forsakes because he desires the sweetness of revenge and because he resents others. Jealousy and rancor are illness for which Allah has given the cure and remedy. Those who repress anger and who pardon men Quran chapter 3 verse 134 show forgiveness and enjoy what is good and turn away from the foolish i.e. don't punish them Quran chapter 7 verse 199 repel the evil with the one which is better i.e. Allah ordered the faithful believer to be patient and at the time of anger and to excuse those who have treated them bad and verily he between whom you there are was enmity will become as thought he was a close friend quran chapter 41 verses 34 do not grieve over the which has passed you by in life for indeed i have been blessed with much contemplate the many favors and gifts that Allah has bestowed upon you and be thankful to him for them remain Remind yourself of Allah's blessings, for He Almighty said, And if you were to count the grace of Allah, never could you be able to count them. Quran chapter 16, verse 18. And Allah has comple completed and perfected His graces upon you, both apparent, i.e., Islamic monotheism and the lawful pleasures of the world, including health and good looks, etc., and hidden, i.e., one's faith in Allah of Islamic monotheism, knowledge, wisdom, guidance for doing righteous deeds and also the pleasure and delightful of hereafter in paradise etc. Quran chapter 31 verse 20 and whatever of blessing and good things you have it is from Allah and then when harm touches you unto whom you cry aloud for help Quran chapter 16 verse 53 Allah said, establishing his favors upon man, have we not made for you him a pair of eyes and a tongue and a pair of lips and shown him the two ways, good and evil? Quran chapter 90 verse 8 to 10. Life, hell, the faculties of hearing and seeing, two hands, two legs, water, air, food, these are some of the good visible blessings in this world. What well, the greatest of all blessing is that of the Islam and correct guidance. What would you say to someone who offered you large sums of money in return for your eyes, your ears, your legs, your hands or your heart? How great is your wealth in reality? By not being thankful, you do not render justice to Allah's countless favors.